Donna Saunders, I give a lot of credit for, for helping me through this tragedy with Chewie. Uh, I have a couple of pictures here to make it a simpler slideshow. I'll pull them up. Let's see if the lighting's right. That's her with her dog, Ollie. It's actually a pit bull and she put a circle around his eye like the one from Our Gang Comedies. She loved that dog and he was adorable, yeah. That goes back, what, maybe 20 years at least, probably 25 years. It's funny how the time uh, flies, right? Here's a cute shot of her as like a motorcycle girl. Just adorable looking. Sometimes I see girls who are kind of Irish looking around her age of this picture I just showed you. I'll flash back, just like there's a flash right there. And uh, those Irish girls sometimes look something like June. But our bloodline is really English and Scottish. This is the early 80s here, a nightclub in North Hollywood called the Palomino, which I think went out of business. June, let's see. June is next to me and there's an Asian lady who came in that I used to work with in a B-girl joint. She's just a friend. She joined us. And uh, one of our outings we had, we didn't have a chance to go out a lot, you know, when we could. And this next shot is a more recent shot of her. Let me see how her hair is cut. Just about like it is. She had it cut a little shorter right at her last period. This is June at her hotel. She looks good with her glasses, kind of studious and uh, intelligent. I think what I want to do is let you know, uh, I found out about her illness maybe late 90s, or early 2000, I think it was. She phoned me and she told me that she had picked up hepatitis C from her husband, her second husband. She used his razor to shave her legs and he was carrying that illness and it transferred to her and I did know a lady in Hollywood that went through the treatments for hep C and it was a ribavirin tablet and an interferon injection every other day for one year. I think June started to maybe try those uh, a little later on but she waited quite a while. And then there was a period I wanted to tell you about June in early 2000. See, she was 63. Five years ago is what it would be, which would put us into uh, 2000. Uh, no, 2010. There we are. We were on the phone. She said, Jerry, tell me what to do. I'm working just telephone soliciting right now, and uh, it's hard, and my back can't take it. She started mentioning her back a lot, and uh, she said <clears throat> a doctor that she liked put her on uh, something that the ladies in Beverly Hills use for back aches, bone aches. I said, what is that? And she said, morphine. I said, wow, that's a little heavy for just back aches and back trouble. What about anti-inflammatory, uh, anti like ibuprofen? And she was on morphine then. And as it turns out, I started thinking really about her condition. And I think she was taking morphine for her liver back then. And she was keeping a lot of it very secret to me. And then uh, as time went on, just about a year or so back from now, she told me she's uh, coming heavier with that illness and having to see a doctor. And she was at this old hotel in uh, Los Angeles I won't give the name out, it's not that important. It was a nice hotel for an old hotel. And uh, I also have lived in an old hotel a long time, which is something we both fell into. But uh, I knew something was wrong. She said, don't worry, I'm just fine. She always said, I'm just fine. But uh, she wasn't just fine. I, I couldn't know because nobody would come out and tell me. But I did get a call from St. Vincent's Hospital telling me she's pretty ill and I should get right over and visit her. And I did that. And she looked okay in the hospital room, but the doctor came in and said, it's very serious. They can't treat her anymore. 
she can't take treatment, it's too advanced. And uh, I couldn't believe it that it had come to this, you know, it came to this time. And then she was shifted to a convalescent for about a month. And I was near my place here in Hollywood, East Hollywood. And I visited her, visited her every day at the hospital. It was very close for me. And uh, she was sweet. She was, we were talking regularly. And uh, right there in March, March 15th and 16th, the afternoon of the 16th, I knew that she was weakening. And uh, I went to touch her, and I made one video saying that we lost her. Well, that was the same day. I touched her hand as I always do, and it was always warm. This afternoon, she was breathing hard, and the hand was cold. And I went out of the convalescent home in tears, because I knew she was going fast. And surely enough, the next day on my email, from my own daughter, uh, I got a message saying June passed. That afternoon, I guess it was on the 17th, around 9 or 10 p.m., four hours after I left the hospital. And I know you all miss her, and uh, I wish I could have known more about how long she was feeling badly, because she covered that part up. I would have been more helpful to her if I really knew. But this is Jerry, her brother, saying thank you for uh, all your support along the way. And I'm going to sign out now, and I'll miss her, of course, the rest of my life. I've got a few years on her. I'm the last of the Mohicans, the last of the original Wilson family. Gives me kind of a feeling like I'm out on a diving board right at the end, and I'm the last one. I thought for sure June would be last, and I would have been gone first. But Thank you for listening to this, and have a good day. The very thought of you And I forget to do The little ordinary things Everyone ought to do I'm living in a kind of daydream I'm happy as a king And foolish though it may seem To me that's everything The mere idea of you the longing here for you You'll never know how slow The moments go Till I'm near to you I see your face in every flower your eyes in stars above It's just the thought of you The very thought of you My